Hi, good morning. It's Lou, Mid Rocky Pharmacy, Thursday. Is it the 29th? 30th? It's one of those two days of October, year of years. There's a lot of things from Tuesday Tea Talk about Samhain, ancestors, honoring relationships, bigger picture things that were really rad. And even though I cannot recreate here that very special, organic, natural, spontaneous awesomeness from that day with those people at that time, uh, the things that we talked about, I can't stop thinking about, which is always cool and something I'm always grateful for, but it also feels important to uh, to share in some way here for other folks because I think I know that is important and resonates with um, with others. So that's what we're going to talk about. <coughs> and I'm doing it in this really cool light. I'm at my Ma's house. <laughs> Ma's fun. <laughs> so, and forgive that it is very early and... Uh, I, I got this thing with dust. It's all up in my schnoz. So, why is it important to connect with ancestors? And we're going to take a wee bit of time. Wee bit of time. Utilitarian to like social justice. Okay? We connect with our ancestors. And again, it's like always a great time. And we'll talk about why and then get to why now this time of the wheel. So connecting with your ancestors, and I get that this is super complicated, and for some people, many, 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 many people, really complicated um, for different reasons, right? You may be adopted, you may be a part of one group of humans, any of the many um, that have been profoundly affected by colonialism or settlerism and, or genocide and whatever the fun shit that humans do to each other, right? So anyone living in diaspora, right? So like there's a lot of human action that um, erodes, destroys culture, tradition, ritual, language. <clears throat> right? So, I know. I do know um, that that's difficult, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, one way to honor that and honor your people. Um, so, there's the very, very utilitarian view, right? And, like, very practical that I think that we all get is, like, honoring your ancestors. Well, they're your people, um, these are the people whose lives have had the most impact on your life in various different ways. And we inherit far more than genes. We inherit entire systems of being, of thinking, of feeling, of praying, of working, uh, we inherit dreams, we inherit traumas, we inherit gifts and talents, and there's, there's, there's so much that we get from our ancestors. And it's probably pretty easy to assume that the quality of your life at this point in uh, medical, technological, and I know I'm not, I do not at all want to like glorify or romanticize um, certain aspects of modern living, but it's also really easy for us to romanticize and glorify previous generations and ways of living. Like, being human is, has been savage as fuck since day one, apparently. But, um, you know, we, had, I mean, and I also, hi, coming from a place of privilege, I have, you know, I usually have access to running water and plumbing and uh, the air quality where I live is not disastrous. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, think about your ancestors in the Middle Ages if, you know, they were in Europe and comparing the quality of life on some things, right? You know, 
everyone has gone through hardships and the survivorship of your ancestors literally has allowed you to exist. So connecting with your ancestors, important. Uh, these are your people. This is your past. Um, you are going to be an ancestor one day, right? And it's cumulative. Uh, <clears throat> the bigger societal, cultural reason why it's important for you to connect with your lineage, your history, the geography, the languages, the rituals, the culture is because um, because of colonialism and because of, of settlers, because of the destruction that has come to indigenous culture and language and everything through that. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with appreciating, educating yourself and others, learning about enjoying uh, supporting other other people's traditions and other people's culture and do that through providing resources sharing resources do that through reparations not through cultural appropriation um and you know in like my tiny little corner of the world right that um <laughs> You know, with for folks who work with plants, like, yo, yeah, white sage is amazing, and it's beautiful, and it smells good, and yes, that is not my plant to use. It's certainly not my plant to sell to white people. Okay, and I'm just using that as one example. There are different kinds of sages. There are so many different kinds of plants, um, and plants that you can work with smudge with um that is not causing any harm that does not perpetuate continue cause harm to other people who have been significantly harmed right like that's why we honor our people too not up for debate that, that that's how that goes right okay cool <clears throat> I'll have coffee, drink coffee. So, the other thing that we had talked about was um, you know, how doing doing the dance of of honoring ancestors and honoring those that came before us and how we do that in a way that is true for us, has integrity, feels good. Uh, especially when some of those ancestors did awful things um, and either did awful things directly to you, um, which was a story that I shared, or, you know, like, you just learned that, like, you know, great-grandpa Bob, you know, was, like, a very, um, was a person that caused a lot of harm or was a person that, was a very active participant in oppressive, shitty shit. So how do we do that? Like, you don't want to light a candle for it for that guy, but, like, that's your people. Doesn't, doesn't make you that, right? That's to deny it, right? You denied it, you supplied it. Can't deny it, right? Um... So, and then one person had shared that, you know, on the birthday or the death day of a person that had caused a lot of harm in their family in a previous generation, they make donations or, repar you know, reparations to black people and people of color. Cool. Find ways that are meaningful, that are sustainable, to do things like that. Like, that's great. Reparations is great, a great way to um, honor the the reality, right, of what happened, of setting a real clear, hard boundary of this is not something that continues in our family line. This is not something that I will carry. Um, you're going to break that shit, which is awesome, and doing it in a very tangible, meaningful way resource use, resource sharing, resource allocation 
is <laughs> it's a totally legit form of justice. It's not the only one, but it is absolutely one. Um, so those were some of the things that we had talked about, and it was really cool. <clears throat> Um, and what I want to spend as much time as possible without you getting super bored. Those things felt really important though. Um, and those aren't like answers to questions. Those are like an answer, a start, a jumping off point, right? For continued exploration, continued exploration. So what I wanted to give sound and space to right now is, um, for those of us, we also had a conversation about like how hard it is to human. And, um, I guess we talk about that every week, kind of, don't we? Specifically an ancestor. Um, you know, when I, when I tell you that I am a hawk or that hawks are my family, I'm not being cute. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not being cute. Uh, when I tell you that nature is my temple, when I tell you that nature is my family, all these, th I mean, I mean that, um, the ancestors don't just, aren't just human. So there's that whole option of honoring too. Um, I... You know, my practices, my rituals, the way I go about it changes as I do, for sure. Um, you know, but this cedar, um, you know, I always, my, my grandfather, Pop, call him Pop, and, and my mom, mom were um, really, really significant and in my life. And so like, I give a lot of focus to them. Um, and I, and other people, and the more that I learn my, um, history of, you know, at least my maternal side of my family, which is easier to find information on, um, I incorporate things. And like, also it's different, like which plants particularly, um, made themselves known this year maybe like I made a new plant friend this season or you know I really leaned on you know I, I learned a lot with a certain another plant you know I'm gonna do some extra I'm just gonna incorporate whatever is relevant um but honoring nature and the earth um at any time of year oh did we talk about why we do this now um we do this, <clears throat> it is always a good time to honor anyone, anything that teaches you, <laughs> that is providing some integrity or care in the world. It is always okay to honor and to give resources and to say thank you and to sit and give some of yourself too, right? Um, the reason this time of year, right, so we're halfway from autumn equinox and winter solstice and in the northern hemisphere for many 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 years many many traditions and many many geographical regions um this is a time of year that you know especially since we you know hunter gatherers when they settled down and became agrarian and agriculture societies um it stayed in one place and um and like culture and society changed a little bit but anyway so it's agriculture it's earth-based that's what i'm trying to spit out so this time of year especially in northern hemisphere um you know the the leaves of deciduous trees are are dying and falling in the most beautiful death ever um literally all the plants and trees are pulling their energy back to their roots for dormancy some plants are just dying um, we're taking stock of, you know, it's the last days usually of, of harvest, of big significant harvest um, for overwintering. Um, checking on the animals, which animals are, are going to make it through winter and which animals are going to help us make it through winter. Um, it's, that's this time of year. It is the transition of so much abundance, fertile, obvious life and and sustenance into lean 
darker, you know, darker days, colder times, lots of literal death around this really beautiful liminal time of shifting from all of that abundance to, um, yeah, to, to a lot of like death and decay and quiet. And so because we are animal and we are mammal and you know, this thing is amazing. And also this prefrontal cortex gets us in, um, a lot of interesting situations. Um, but we are nature, right? So we mimic that of course. And we also create tradition and ritual to honor that. Um, and so that's what this time of year is. So, you know, depending your ancestry and your lineage, you know, it, it might be Samhain, you know, that's, you know, Celtic and, and Druid and, and pagan stuff. Um, you know, and like Swedish has like a different version and like different kinds of traditional traditions. But this is Halloween came from all of this. So whether it's Samhain, Halloween, All Hallows Eve, All Saints Day, Dia de Muertos, there's so many different cultures, languages, rituals that, um, of course, you know, are observing the natural rhythm and flows and, and working in living, breathing, loving, <laughs> learning, creating in a tighter, interdependent flow right with nature um which is why well, it's so fun and beautiful because the earth is great um so you can totally you know look into all of that as and you know for for us who've been you know like love this shit and have been practicing like it constantly evolves and there's no one right way to do any of it so besides honoring your human ancestors, you can totally honor all the non-human ancestors and all the non-human life around you that you learn from and that you get so much from. I mean, Hawk has been with me for many, many years. Um, and I say that meaning uh, I can feel a hawk before I see it. Uh, Often, you know, the timing is not an accident, you know, or not, I don't believe in coincidences, especially with nature. Um, and so I'll talk real quick about like how we can connect with that and how this is part of honoring at Samhain time, but the, at any time, go outside, be still, be quiet and observe. Yeah. Yeah, when you go for that woodsy walk, don't be on your phone. Don't listen to music. There's already music in the woods. How are you going to hear yourself? How are you going to hear your bones? How are you going to hear the woods if you're not quiet and still in here? And notice things. You know, uh, birds flying. And not just that, what color are they? In which direction are they flying? Are they hunting? Are they in a group? What time of day is it? How many deer were there? What was it like as the leaves were falling around you? Did you do the foot foot shuffle like kid walk through the crunchy leaves? Did you feel joyous? Did you feel at peace? I bet you did. Me just thinking about it, I feel better. Press some flowers. Make a bouquet and don't give it to anybody. Give it to the earth. Um, maybe there's guys on how to do this. We all know how to do this. We just have forgotten. Um, and there is no right or wrong way. Um, and whatever, you know, whatever your relationship with honoring or respecting the earth or feeling, you know, like energetically or spiritually connected to earth or nature, it's in you. And really all that's required is attention. <laughs> 
plants come across your path and they don't even have legs, right? Plants will make themselves known. Animals will make themselves known to you. This actually happens on a regular basis. Just like as people come into your life at like really interesting times, there's messages. Um, I don't know. And that's like for you to hear and listen. And sometimes it's not super dramatic and profound. Sometimes it's just, hey, breathe deeper. Or hey, yeah, look at all this. You guys, you guys, you humans are like super destructive, but like look at all this life and matter that still exists and thrives. Um, lighting and, and like, and also connecting with elements, I think is super dope also and part of it. And like, you don't need to be a witch. You don't need to, you don't need to be anything other than your human self. And <clears throat> I don't know if this was helpful. I hope that it is a little bit longer that, you know, 15 minutes is tough sometimes. Um, thank you for taking the time uh, to be here. I'm continuing to get a tremendous amount of really dope feedback. Um, if you have anything constructive also, that would be helpful. <laughs> Do it. Um, I'm here for it. Again, if you get anything out of, you know, the free content here, um, my Venmo is listed. There's, you know, no amount of resource too small. Um, if you can always um, also ask me for my mailing address and maybe you draw or you make things and you want to send something my way, that's always okay. Um, I would love for you to send me your email because um, I'm going to, I, if, if you wanna keep in touch other than like the comment section of Instagram, um, please send me your email because it won't be like spammy stuff or like probably won't even be coupons. It's gonna be the other, the other stuff that I do. Um, that being said though too, I'm gonna be back in headquarters by nightfall and uh, Thank you for the orders that have been placed and there's still plenty of like ready to go stuff. There's pit sticks, there's soap, there's the tea blends that my brilliant, brilliant friend, mentor, elder, surrogate, oh, I, I love you, Drea, Madrea, oh, took the Loon Love, took a little bit of cheesecloth and she took the Loon Love blend maybe like two tablespoons and just put in the cheesecloth and then she tied it up. She added it to a bath. I used to make tubby teas, but like that's brilliant. Um, there's a bunch of those. All them Nervines in alcohol or apple cider vinegar are there. Um, I got some stuff, some stuff brewing for winter solstice time, but I would definitely, um, yeah, the, the boobs, the boob oils, the boob bombs. Um, yeah. Um, so I'll be back next Monday to talk about what we're, we're going to have Tuesday tea time. I'm trying to feel out from folks. Um, a lot of people want me to move it from 2 p.m., which is totally fine for me. If you have an opinion, please share it with me. Um, as always, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your questions. That was the other great thing from Tuesday Tea Time was someone said, hey, I don't really, like, I'm not, I'm not really sure what you guys are talking about. Can I ask questions? And I, I of course, I'm like, yes, ask questions. And then it was so great because then, like, everyone else was like, yes, please ask questions. Like, that is more than okay to do here. Um, I think that's a lot of what we do together here, right? Like, I'm not a guru. I'm not a master. I have, I don't have answers. Um, I have tons and tons of questions. And then I have like, whatever seems to work or whatever, you know, like that innate knowing, you know, sometimes you just know stuff. Like I didn't, there are a lot of this stuff with the plants and like, and animals and, and earth. I, I wasn't taught it. I didn't, I didn't learn it from someone. Um, 
some of the stuff, absolutely, like, I study really hard, but, like, a lot, my whole base is, like, I just, I apparently, I, I don't know, I, it's, it seems like I came here knowing, knowing it, like, it was already in my bones, um, I'm gonna drink more coffee and play with Kinga, who's starting to get up, and I love you, and I will see you very soon, thank you for being here, and, Blessings to you. I don't usually say stuff like this, but blessings to you and yours. And may your ancestors feel loved and honored. And may you feel loved and honored also. You are important. And I'm very happy to know you. Very. All right. I love you. I'll see you.